The Insta360 GPS Action Remote can control not just one, not just two, but up to three cameras all at the same time. How does it work? How well does it work? Well, let's find out. One of the first videos I posted to my site was about this guy, the Insta360 GPS Action Remote. And since then, I've posted several videos using this remote, controlling different Insta360 cameras. But today, we're going to be looking at this remote for controlling multiple Insta360 cameras at the same time. We're going to look at how to set it up, and we're also going to look at how well it performs. Now there's quite a bit to cover here, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline. But before we get into it, very important to mention that this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. And of course, if you enjoy the video and get good information out of it, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So, let's get on with it. So, currently there are two different dedicated remotes available from Insta360. We have the relatively new GPS Preview remote that was launched a few months ago, and we have the GPS Action remote which has been around for well over a year. Now, the GPS Preview Remote does offer a lot more functionality, but currently it only supports three cameras from the Insta360 lineup, the Ace, the Ace Pro, and the X4. And while the GPS Action Remote has more limited functionality, it basically supports the entire Insta360 product line. So as far as functionality is concerned, the GPS Action Remote allows you to power on and power off the camera. It allows you to select between the recording modes, but is limited to just four recording modes. And of course, it allows you to start and stop recording or take still pictures. In addition, of course, it has the built-in GPS functionality. So as long as it is connected to your camera and has a GPS signal, it will record and embed GPS data into your recordings. But today, what we want to look at in more detail is connecting the GPS remote to multiple cameras at the same time. Now, the Action Remote will support up to three cameras simultaneously, and it can be any three from the list of compatible cameras, which you can mix and match in any combination. And as you saw previously, these are the three cameras that I'm going to be using. I have a Go 3S, I have an Ace Pro, and I have an X4. And we're going to connect all three of these to my GPS Action Remote. We're going to go through the connection process, and then we're going to see how well they work together. So let's start out then by going through the connection process. Okay, let's start out by connecting the Go 3S. So I'm going to power on the remote. And you can see it comes up in the settings menu and I'm going to use the record button here as my enter button. So I go into settings and you can see the first item is pair new. So I'm going to start that process. And then on my Go 3S, I go into the settings menu. I scroll to Bluetooth remote. You can see that it's already discovered it here. So I'm going to tap on that. And you'll see very quickly it is now connected. You'll see that I can now Start my recording, stop my recording, and so on. Okay, so right now my Go 3S is connected, and you can see that in the display of the Action Remote. Now what we want to do is to also add my Ace Pro. Now the first thing I'm going to do is use the top button on here. I'm going to hold it down to go into the settings menu. Then once again, I'm going to use that record button as an enter button. Go into settings. The first option again is pair new. 
So we hit that, and now it is looking to connect to another camera. On the Ace Pro, I go into the menu, you can see there is a dedicated remote icon here, so I tap that. And after a few seconds, it finds the GPS remote, which we then connect. And as you can see in the display of the remote, it now says, ready, two cameras connected. Let's just go back out. Now if I hit the record button, both cameras now are recording. And if I hit it again, they both stop. Okay, so now we have both the Go3S and the Ace Pro connected. You can see that in the display of the remote, two cameras connected. Now we want to add our third camera here, and it's basically the same operation. We hold down the mode button until we get to the settings menu. Pair new. And on my X4 now, I choose the same remote icon. It discovers the remote within a few seconds, and we connect it. And now we have three cameras connected. So once again, I can start recording on all three cameras now at the same time. Okay, let's talk about operating three different cameras at the same time. So as you can see from the remote, I have all three cameras connected and all three are in the standard video mode right now. So let's start with the very easy stuff. Obviously, if I hit the record button, all three cameras will start recording. And if I press it again, all three cameras stop recording. So far, so good. As far as powering on and off is concerned, if I use the bottom button, just one press, it will turn off the display of all three cameras. If I press it again, obviously it will turn the displays back on. And if I press and hold the power button, it will power off all three cameras. Okay, so far so good. Now let's say I want to power the cameras back on again. So I'm going to hit the power button, which activates to wake up the cameras. But as you can see, it actually only wakes up one camera, and that is, in this case, the Go 3S, because this apparently was the last connected camera. So in order to connect the other two cameras, I have to power them on manually. Now they do not automatically reconnect to the remote. I do have to partially go through the pairing process again. So what I'll do is again, hold down the mode button to access settings. I hit pair new. And as soon as I do, one of the cameras now reconnects. And then I have to do that once again. Pair new. It's now searching for another camera. Now, on the, in the case of an X3 or X4, this takes quite a bit of time, but just give it about 25 seconds or so, and it will automatically connect. And there you see, we now have all three cameras reconnected again. Now, you may also notice that the screen for the Go 3S did not power on. That's because when you wake up a Go 3 or Go 3S, it only wakes up the camera, not the action pod. If you want the action pod also on, you have to power it on yourself. And finally, when it comes to control, let's talk about the mode button. And basically, in a case like this, where you're operating different types of Insta360 cameras using a single remote, do not attempt to use the mode button. If you do, you'll get into all kinds of problems. 
In order to understand why that's the case, you need to understand how the different types of Insta360 camera respond to the mode button. So with the X4, the four modes that are offered are standard video mode, time shift mode, loop recording mode, photo mode, and background to video mode. The Ace Pro has five modes that are supported, including standard video, pure video, time shift, loop recording, and standard photo. And one more press takes us back to standard video mode. So with the Go 3S, the options are video, free frame video, time shift, and standard photo. And then of course cycles back to video. But with the Go 3 and Go 3S, unlike the other cameras, the selection requires confirmation by using the record button. So you'll notice right now we are on the video mode. If I, let's say, select the photo mode, you'll see that it hasn't actually been accepted on the camera yet. I have to hit the record button. That does not start recording or take a picture. It simply selects that mode. Now, if I hit it again, it will take a picture. And again, and if I now want to go back to the video mode, I have to select it, confirm it. You can see it now on the display. And now if I hit record, it will begin standard video recording. Okay, so just for fun then, let's see what happens if we try to use the mode button with these three very different Insta360 cameras. So as you can see right now, I have three cameras connected. All three are in the standard video mode. And let's see what happens if I hit the mode button. So you can see the X4 goes to time shift, the Ace Pro goes to pure video mode. And so far, nothing has happened on the Go 3S because I haven't confirmed with the record button. So if I decide now to start a recording, the X4 and the Ace Pro start recording, but this just acts as a confirmation to set the Go 3S into its free frame mode. And as you can see now, they're completely out of sync. So if I stop the recording on these two, it will now start a recording on this one. So obviously this is not something you're going to be able to use when you have three different cameras connected to a single remote. However, if you have two similar cameras, now here I have an X3 and an X4. In this case, you may be able to make good use of the mode button. You'll notice here I can switch the mode to time shift. I can switch to loop recording, photo mode. So far, they are both operating in sync. However, if they get out of sync somehow, so right now I have this one set in the time shift mode, this one in standard video, and if I use the mode button now, this one has gone to loop recording and this one is in time shift. So as you can see, they are now out of sync. So you have to try to get them back in sync. And now they will work in synchronization again. So when it comes to other features, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. The first being the display of the remote itself. Now, when you're operating just a single camera, the display gives you quite a bit of useful information, including the mode of the camera, how much recording time is left on your memory card, battery status of the camera, even things like some of the parameters. So quite a bit of useful information. Also, you have this nice prominent status light here. And if you start a recording, as you can see, it starts flashing red. So it's very easy to see with a quick glance at the remote whether your camera is recording or not. Well, unfortunately, when you connect to more than one camera, 
all of that information is gone. The only thing you see on the display is how many cameras you have connected. It also gives you a status of ready. None of that changes. If I start a recording on the various cameras, nothing changes on the display. So I have no information about what my cameras are doing and whether or not they're recording. And this for me is a big miss. And frankly, I think it's something they could easily fix with a firmware update. The other thing I wanted to mention in this section is the GPS functionality. As I'm sure you know, this has a built-in GPS receiver, and when you're connected to your camera and recording, it will embed the GPS data into your file, and you can use that and display it in your videos. Well, the good news here is when connected to multiple cameras, that function still works. So it will save the GPS data and embed it into the recordings of all the cameras that are connected. So what's the verdict on using the GPS Action Remote to control multiple Insta360 cameras? Well, basically it works on up to three cameras at the same time, and as long as all you're looking to do is to start and stop the recording, I guess it does the job. But beyond that, the functionality is a little bit underwhelming. If you're using different camera types, the mode button becomes more of a liability than it is a feature, and even with the same camera type, it's still a little bit risky. As far as powering the cameras on and off is concerned, you can power them off, but I find it a little bit strange that you can only turn one of them back on again. And even if you manually power the others back up, they don't reconnect automatically. And then there's the complete lack of any status information on the display, and probably worst of all, no indication whatsoever when the cameras are recording and when they are not. So overall then, and I have to say this is somewhat typical of Insta360 when it comes to anything Bluetooth related, the implementation here could be and probably should be significantly better. So that wraps it up for another video. I hope you enjoyed it and got good information out of it. If so, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you have suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comment section. Otherwise, thank you again for watching.